Uh, if you've been joining with us, we're in a series we've entitled, Where is the Love? And we're studying through uh, the book of 1 John slowly because we made a commitment as a body of believers in 2021 to discipleship and to uh, growing closer and closer to Jesus, being good disciples so that we might reach out and make disciples as scripture challenges us to do. Isn't it amazing to be loved? Anybody ever been loved? <laughs> Only happened to me one time. She's right over there. Love. What is love? That could be a difficult question to answer, couldn't it? But what is love? Anybody? Sacrifice. So difficult you don't want to answer, right? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Compassion. Compassion. You, you, you sure it's not that those, those butterflies you get in your stomach when you're around that special person? My, my dad used to ask me, he'd say, he'd say uh, Chris, do you love me? And I would say, yeah, I love you. He said, well, how do you know? And the first few times he asked me, I'm like, I really ain't got no idea, Dad. I just, <laughs> just trust me on this one. <laughs> and uh, then he began, he said, well, can you feel it in your toes? You see, love is not that butterfly feeling. I think our society and especially the entertainment world would try to make us believe that love is some amazing feeling that we get when we're around someone that we care about. But love is not a feeling. I just ask someone who's been married longer than a day. <laughs> love, love is a choice. I'm afraid to tell you that the feelings, if you're getting ready to get married, I'm sorry, you came to the wrong sermon. <laughs> the feelings of love come and go. But when we choose to love someone else, when we choose to put their wants and needs and desires above our own, that's love. I think maybe the problem that we have with love is that it's way overused in our society. Let me try to share an example. I, I love Courtney. I love my wife, right? And on a normal day, we will say to each other that we love each other tons of times throughout the day. Uh, when, when she is at work or whatever the deal is and we, we text back and forth throughout the day, if you were to go back and read through some of those text messages, you would see over and over again, I love you or love you or whatever it is down through there, right? All of that is great, but this is what happens is I will say to her, I love you. And then the very next sentence out of my mouth might be something like, I really love bacon. <laughs> and if, if she were to be honest, she would just say, I, I really love Mountain Dew. <laughs> I sure hope that our love for each other is more than our love for bacon and Mountain Dew. If it's not, it won't last. 
So what is love? 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is our core verse, kind of our memory verse for this series. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, love is a choice that God made to send his son as a sacrifice for my sin and for your sin. He gave up everything, not because God had some butterflies in his stomach, but because he chose to value a relationship with us as individuals. I think that's kind of what kicks off our study through 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 11 this morning. It's this idea that God chose a relationship for us. Slide down 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 7 with me. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you've had since the beginning. This old command is a message you've heard. Yet, I'm writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing, and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in light but hates his brother or sister is still in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Let's be reminded of who the Apostle John is writing to. He's writing to this group of people who've been encouraged by society that uh, everything flesh is bad. And then, so how could God come in the flesh if everything about the flesh is bad? How, How could God be a part of that? And they're so at odds with each other within God's church that people are beginning to leave the church and and fall away for this cultural belief. The people that the Apostle John is writing to are in the church and they are at each other's throats. And here the Apostle John says, listen, This this is not a new command, but an old command. But let me just share with you a new way of thinking. And so he's going to offer three different things. The first thing he's going to say is it's a new emphasis. But dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but a what? But an old one, which you've had since what? Since the beginning, this old command is a message you have what? You've heard. It's it's not new, it's old, it's been around, you've seen it, you've experienced it, you've heard it. What John says is, brothers and sisters, love is not new. Love has been around since the very beginning of creation. It's not a new command, it's an old one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18, you ever read through the book of Leviticus? Be honest, you're in church. (laughs) Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people. But what? Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Loving God and loving our, our neighbor were Old Testament commands. There's nothing new about them. They should have known that. Even Jesus, when he's doing ministry, highlighted the importance of loving God and our neighbors. Mark chapter 12, starting verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. Imagine that. He asked him, of all the commandments, 
which is the most important? Here's this scene kind of playing out. This guy overhears Jesus giving a good answer. And he thinks, man, he thinks just maybe he's just a little bit smarter than Jesus. And he walks up and he just kind of says, of of all the commandments, which is the greatest? Jesus doesn't miss a beat. The most important one answered Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. John here is not making a new commandment, but he's making a new emphasis on moving from the rule of love to the relationship of love. You you see, in Old Testament times, it was a rule, it was a law, and what John is emphasizing is that we are transitioning from this rule of love, but into a relationship of love with God through Jesus. He makes a new emphasis. Secondly, he makes a new Example, First John chapter 2, verse 8, yet I'm, I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. The darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. He first shares this idea of the old example, and the old example is going to be a guy by the name of Jesus. You see, Jesus came himself and willingly died a criminal's death to take on the punishment that you and I deserve. Jesus took my place on the cross. You see, because of who I am and what I've done, I deserve, I deserve to be hung between two thieves. Jesus willingly took my place. For what reason? To be an amazing example of what love looks like. You see, there is no greater symbol of love than this. Because in this moment, Jesus says, I'm going to give up everything for you. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. You see, people will often say relationships are 50-50. I'm afraid that's a lie. I'm afraid that relationships have to be 100-100. You've got to be all in. And what Jesus says on the cross is he is sold out to every single person on this planet. We have an old example of what love looks like in Jesus. The Apostle John says, but we also have a new example of what love, look, what love looks like. And that new example is those who have given their lives over to Jesus and surrendered to him as Lord and Savior. And that new example are followers of Jesus like us. John said, listen, you've already seen an amazing example of what love looks like in Jesus. 
Now it's time for you to be a new example. Quit fighting each other and choose to love even when you don't see eye to eye with your fellow brothers or sisters. Show love. If those around us are doing nothing but fighting and grumbling and complaining. Church, we got to be different. We can't be fighting amongst ourselves. There are enough battles for us to fight out there. You don't believe me? Watch the school board meetings once a month. That's kind of joking, but I'm kind of serious and kind of compassionate about where our world's going. I think God just shut my mouth just in time before I got in trouble right there. (laughs) I was getting ready to say one more thing, and he said no. (laughs) And I'm going to listen. Folks, there is absolutely nothing that should get in the way of us sharing the love of Jesus with those around us. We've got to be an example for that. Lastly, the Apostle John says this is a brand new experience. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in darkness and walks around in darkness. They do not know where they're going because the darkness has blinded them. John takes this previous example to a whole new level. He says, listen, if you don't love God, if you don't love others, you are walking around in darkness. He says, you cannot be in a good relationship with God without being in relationship with others. You see, the old experience was one of following rules and laws. This new experience is one of relationships and joining together. We don't need others to follow rules, but we do need others for relationships. This is why God established the church, the local church. It's the fellowship of believers. You cannot be a Christian alone. Now, I understand in our world today where you can do just about everything without going anywhere. I don't believe that a person can be in a complete and developing Christian life unless they are in fellowship with other believers. That may be an unpopular opinion. And I hear this argument from time to time where people go, well, can I read my Bible at home? Absolutely, and you should be. Oh, can I pray at home by myself? Yeah, you can, and you should be. Can I take communion at home by myself? You can. Why do I, then why do I need to go to church? I could just be a Christian right here in my living room. I, I could be, a, I, I'm going to turn on the whatever evangelist comes on TV on Sunday morning and I'll, I'll watch their sermon. Yeah, you can do that. It'll probably be a much better sermon than the one you're going to hear here. I think the problem is our view on that. You see, I don't view it like I got to come to church like this is what I got to do to be a Christian. I kind of view this thing as God gives me the opportunity to come to church. It's not I have to. It's I want to because of what he did for me going back to here. Because of what God did for me on the cross, 
that he gave up his life that I might have life and have it to the full, I get to come here and interact with my brothers and sisters in Christ so that we might encourage and challenge and build each other up so that when we leave this place, we might be prepared and encouraged and strengthened when we go out there to share the love of God with people. You see, the Christian life has two real, real important relationships. The, the first one is this relationship that I have with God. The second is this horizontal relationship that I have with other people. I don't think this is a mistake. If I'm going to have a relationship with God the Father, and then it says, if you have a good relationship with God the Father, you're going to extend that out and have relationships with other people. Not only, and we could look at this like, if you go to the right side, you say, okay, these are people who are followers of Jesus. I have relationships with followers of Jesus who are my brothers and sisters, but I also have relationships with people over here who don't know Jesus. They don't have their life all together. They don't talk like other people. They do things that other people maybe look down on. Hmm. I have relationships with both groups of those people because I think that's the full extent of what Jesus is challenging me to do. Where is the love? It's in relationship. It's in our relationship with God. It's in our relationship with others. Here in just a moment, the praise team is going to come. We sang this song last week, but I want you to sing it, really sing it this week. And I want you to really pay attention to the words. It starts kind of like this. We want our coffee in the lobby. <laughs> We, we want our worship on a screen. Imagine that. We want a rock star, well, we want a rock star preacher. Well, you didn't get that. <laughs> we want a rock star preacher that won't move us. We want our missions overseas. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time for us to stand up for what we believe in. It's time for us to take a stand. It's time for us to make a, be a, a good example, not of a new command, but of an old one. It's time for us to be an example of what the love of Jesus looks like, what it looks like to sacrifice for every single person around us. We can't expect our world to change for the better. It's not gonna. And I know people stand and they look around and go, how did we get here? How did we get to a place where we're having conversations about transgender bathrooms? We got here because we didn't stand up then. How do we get to a place where prayer was removed from school? Because we didn't take a stand then and say prayer is important. If we want to make a difference, it's going to start right here. <laughs>